Bluetooth devices are all around us, yet they have been challenging to integrate into home automation. One reason Zigbee has been the go-to for so long. But things are changing and in this video you'll discover how. I'll walk you through a breakthrough that makes Bluetooth a good alternative for your smart home and unlocks a powerful side effect that can take your automation to the next level. Let's dive in. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, bringing you a new episode with fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll always sit in the front row. Everybody uses Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices, and some of us also Zigbee. The nerds may be LoRa, and the optimists wait for matter and threat to work correctly. Why not use what we have? Wi-Fi for fast traffic and Bluetooth for low energy sensors. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth usually come together because they work on the same frequency, so it's extremely cheap to implement. With our ESP32s, we use Wi-Fi all the time. But what about Bluetooth? Because of its low power consumption, it is ideal for all sorts of sensors and sometimes actuators. But unfortunately, it also has a short range. This is why the sensors usually only work with proprietary smartphone apps and were never very interesting to us. The Raspberry Pi has Bluetooth capabilities too, but most sensors do not sit around our servers. Because things have changed, this video will. Check out what changed with the maturity of Bluetooth proxies for Home Assistant. How Bluetooth devices do behave. How this new concept works. Where you have to pay attention. How Bluetooth proxies can be built and integrated. We will look at a few sensors and learn how they can be locally integrated into Home Assistant. Not always easy in the modern cloud world. And we will look into a fantastic project called Bermuda that does exactly the opposite of what its name says. One word about Bluetooth. Unfortunately, the same name is used for two very different technologies. Classic Bluetooth is usually used for audio applications and Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE, which is used for data transmission. In this video, we will use BLE only. I made a video on using BLE with the ESP32, but unfortunately, it was very power hungry and unsuitable for sensor applications. But its BLE capabilities are perfect if mains powered. And this is what we will use today. What changed? There is a simple trick to cope with the short range of BLE. Distribute receivers in all areas where you want to place sensors, similar to Wi-Fi access points in various locations of our homes. A project called OpenMQTT Gateway, also covered on this channel, started the new trend for connecting a BLE receiver via Wi-Fi to a server to extend the BLE range. It is still a good solution for non-BLE sensors and if you do not use Home Assistant. Then Home Assistant came with a Bluetooth proxy. Until recently it remained largely unnoticed. Its stability was not great and not many sensors were supported. My Xiaomi scale for example was not supported when I did my lose weight with a Raspberry project. But what is a proxy? It acts as a gateway that receives Bluetooth messages and transfers them via the home network to a server, typically via Wi-Fi. The logic to decode these messages is at the server, not in the proxy. One reason for instability was that Bluetooth uses the same radio as Wi-Fi. So an ESP32 can only do Wi-Fi or BLE at a time. And switching between them is tricky they managed to get this working. Still, we have to be cautious not to disappoint ourselves, as we will later see. How do BLE devices behave? To understand BLE devices, I strongly recommend using the NRF Connect app on your smartphone. 
It shows BLE signals, including the standardized information regularly transmitted by these devices. BLE devices can behave in several ways. They regularly transmit advertising packets that contain their device address similar to a MAC address. As with MAC addresses, some devices randomize them to avoid tracking. Some devices are shy and have to be stimulated by others to start a communication. Some specialized devices transmit additional beacon information. If connected to its counterparts, BLE devices only have eyes for them and stop advertising to the public. So your smartwatch connected to your smartphone is no longer advertising. And the worst bunch has secrets. It encrypts its messages. Not polite. But fortunately, we will meet a very clever friend who helps us. You see, BLE devices expose very human traits. How do the Bluetooth proxies work? They are part of the ESP Home project and, like NRF Connect, they regularly scan the BLE frequencies to find BLE messages around them. After a predefined time, they switch to Wi-Fi and transmit their catch to Home Assistant. That's all. The best is that the BLE proxy functionality can be added to all ESP32 based ESP Home devices. Just add this line in the configuration file and you are good to go. What is true in theory is not always in reality. Because during BLE scanning Wi-Fi is off, the reaction time of sensors can be sluggish. Or the device does not find enough time to scan. This is why I strongly suggest doing profound testing if you add it to one of your existing sensors. Or use independent ESP32 boards just for this functionality. It is a perfect application for old or half defective boards laying around from old projects. Just the ESP32 module has to work. The display or the LoRa chip can be defective. A second fact is important too. We all love Arduino on the ESP32. But we know that Espressive sometimes has to cut corners when integrating its proprietary ESP IDF into the Arduino framework. This is particularly important for BLE. So it's recommended that we use the ESP IDF framework for the Bluetooth proxies. How can we build such a proxy? As said, the easiest way is to append these lines to an existing ESP Home device. Here you also can add active if you have some shy devices in your network. I do not know how to find out if a device is shy, so I recommend using the active mode. It only sends an advertising package from time to time. So an atomic power plant should not be needed for its additional power consumption. I would also add a web server to monitor the devices outside ESP Home. And if you want to see a bit behind the scenes, this logger line is helpful. It shows the discovered devices right at the source. Switch it off for productive use. Save and install the code wirelessly and the proxy should be ready. Pay attention, the compilation can take much time, mainly if you run ESP Home on a Raspberry Pi. With my Intel CPU on my Proxmox server, it is much faster. And a tip, always hold the boot button on the ESP till the flashing has started. It can save you a lot of time. As I said, this is not my preferred way. If you want to get a specialized proxy as fast as possible, you can go to this page and install it directly. Back in Home Assistant, it should be auto-detected and you can adopt it. If you look at the configuration, you will not find the line with Bluetooth proxy. Strange. The default name of the device is proxy and it behaves like a proxy. Finally, I found the reason. It is this line that is different from the standard implementations. With this line, it already has the proxy functionality. 
you can still add the web server or logger if you want. Now that we have a proxy, we can check it out. I have a few BLE sensors around. One is this temperature and humidity sensor. The Xiaomi BLE integration in Home Assistant supports it. Cool. Just add the integration and add the device. It works like a charm. Let's continue with my Xiaomi devices. I have one of their body scales upstairs. An open MQTT gateway currently connects it to Node-RED. So let's replace it with a second proxy device. Yes, it is detected and can be added like the sensor before. As planned, Home Assistant got the BLE data from the proxy upstairs via Wi-Fi without telling it which proxy is close to the sensor, a feature we will later depend on. Now I'm convinced that this is a convenient solution. Next I have a second Xiaomi thermometer. This one is smaller but harder to integrate because it uses encrypted messages. Fortunately we have Aaron Christoffel, the man for such tasks. He hacked it and gave us a simple method to flash his firmware to the device, without soldering any wires. Respect. Now it behaves as it should and shows its values in Home Assistant. Cool. The next is this fingerbot. How cool would it be to control it with Home Assistant? Unfortunately, as with most Tuya devices, it's not easy. Home Assistant discovers it, but the switch is greyed out and does not work. These Tuya devices are somehow protected and you have to get credentials from their cloud. Not what we want. It was a similar situation with the Zigbee Fingerbot, by the way. So if I have time, I will try to resolve it. For your information, the newer Shellys with ESP32 MCUs have an integrated BLE proxy without cloud and encryption, precisely as we like it. The following device is simple again. It is a plant moisture sensor. It is discovered and connects to Home Assistant without any problems. Perfect! By the way, I just got a few new moisture sensors in the mail. In addition to moisture, one of them also measures pH, conductivity and an indicator for the amount of fertilizer in the soil. They probably will show up in a future video. Now I have a proxy close to the bathroom and one in my lab. Home Assistant knows where I place them because I assigned an area to them. What would happen if I would carry a BLE device with me? The proxy in the lab would pick its signal up when I'm in the lab and the one close to the bathroom when I'm there. And if I added a third proxy in my radio room, it would also detect me there. This is precisely what Bermuda does. It collects all BLE data from all proxies and tries to determine where a particular BLE device is. You can install it from hacks and it does not need configuration. It immediately shows all connected proxies as well as all detected BLE devices. But how do you find out which device is which? I use a simple trick. In NRF Connect, you can display the signal strength. If you place the sensor in question close to the smartphone, it shows up on top. To prove that it is the correct one, you move it away from the phone. A downward pointing line is the proof for your choice. I have to admit that I have no clue why they choose this name. Because in the Bermuda Triangle, planes and ships disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Maybe this project should help find me if I mysteriously disappear in the triangle between my lab, the radio room and the mailbox. Because I do not carry my smartphone at home, it would not help to detect my presence even if we could fix the random MAC address problem of many smartphones. So I need a better solution. These small nuts are perfect for the task. They fit in a tiny space and do the job. Like that I can personalize my home. For example, I could check the power consumption of my lab when I entered the bedroom and warn me if I forgot to switch something off before I go to bed 
which happens sometimes and drains our solar battery quite a bit during the night. Or I could switch my radios on when I enter the radio room. Because who else need them? I'm sure you also have some ideas for your environment. The only big problem, as usual, is the other people or animals in the house. I could imagine putting such a tracker on the cat's neckband, but I'm not sure how it would work with my wife. So I fear I must only automate my things. Or maybe you have a better idea? The problem with the random Mac of the smartphone, by the way, can be solved with the Home Assistant Companion app, at least on Android. There you can enable a BLE transmitter that acts as a beacon if you are connected to your home Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, the iPhone does not offer this feature. Summarized, Bluetooth proxies extend the range of BLE devices a lot. Because it just transfers BLE messages to the server, it does not need a lot of functionality. The decoding can be done on the server, in this case on Home Assistant. Because Home Assistant became the de facto standard, most devices are already supported and new ones are usually quickly adopted. This enables us to use BLE sensors, not only Zigbee sensors. And nobody has to wait till the Matter Consortium gets its act together. Bermuda uses these proxies for presence detection. It works okay if you do not expect a fine granularity. So there is still a need for PIR sensors and alike. One last thing. If you want to avoid Wi-Fi and connect your proxy via Ethernet cable, you can buy one of those PoE boards. Power over Ethernet means that they are also powered over one cable if your switch supports that. Just add these lines to your configuration file and you are good to go. That was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. If you found this video useful or interesting, please support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.